Hey guys, finally sleeps here. Today I'm putting together a video on how to make coins in the current market. This is going to be a long, boring, slow video with a lot of talking because I don't want to spell it all out for everybody and their little brother. It takes a special kind of gamer to even want to take on something like this. It requires patience, a love of numbers, and you need to be committed. Not committed as in someone had you committed but well actually now that I think about it that might help at any rate you have to be kind of out of your mind uh, fry short of a happy meal a few cushions short of a sofa to even give this a go for those that do it's a massive source of coins I'm only hoping to explain this to the die-hard market fanatics the coin freaks that have the patience and the time to make millions of coins week in and week out. If you've ever heard the adage, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, and you feed him for life. If you've ever heard that, well, today I'm teaching you how to fish. Literally, we're going to go fishing in the market. Last season was all about coin farming. This season, we're leaving the field behind and heading toward the lake. Get it? We're fishing. Fishing. In a lake. For coins. Holy shit, this video is going to be horrible. Good luck making your way through it. First thing to take note of is that the current market is FIFA Mobile 20. It's February. Lunar New Year just ended. Now I'm explaining when this video is being made because you need to realize and remember that the market is a fickle bitch. She will shift, she's bipolar, she might be nice to you one day and she's crazy the next. It changes all the time. It's like the 90s Britney Spears. It's a Lindsay Lohan market. EA could make changes to the way the bot buys players or the market could just shift on you. Last year when EA added the suggested price button, it completely changed the way we went about uh, working the market, uh, making coins. Coin farming for silvers turned into investment farming, which has now turned into spike fishing, which is what this method is. So don't rely so much on the numbers as the method. Now the second thing to take note of is the numbers I use for fishing. Wait, first. Fishing is the term I use for the type of investing and selling that we're going to be discussing in this video. The numbers I use for fishing vary from event to event, uh, month to month, even day to day. It depends on what's working and what is not, how active the market is, and also what OVR I'm fishing at. Now this method does work for all OVRs, silvers, golds, elites, even masters, and bronze too. It's a simple method that just capitalizes on the bot market system that EA uses for FIFA Mobile. I will not be giving you the numbers I'm using straight out. If you watch the weekly live streams I put out on Twitch, you can get all the numbers there, but for this video, I'm not giving you the current numbers. The filters I'm using are day by day. Watch the streams if you wanna see them. It's just another good reason to follow or subscribe along at Twitch. Or if you follow along at FinallySleeps.com where I post about FIFA Mobile every day, I'll gladly share what I'm doing at any given time with the members there. But for this video, I'm explaining the technique, not the current numbers. I'm teaching you how to fish. I'm not handing you a pre-baited pull. Now, if I gave you the numbers I'm using today, two things are gonna happen. First, you'd all rush the market and use those exact same numbers, which would overload all three global markets and none of us would be making any coins. And two, three months from now, somebody would watch this video and try to use those numbers that worked back in February out in May and then get pissed when the market is shifted but they're 90 days behind the curve and just spinning their wheels. Which brings me to my next piece of advice. If you're one of those little D-bags that watch a third of a video and then fast forward to the screenshots or just assume you know what's going on and then post a comment with your own explanation in 25 words and a thank you note, don't bother. I will delete that shit because you're part of the problem. 
Obviously, you can't explain this in 25 words, first of all. And second, if you just hand everyone the keys to the car, they're all going to be fighting over dad's Buick. And the last thing I want to do is impact the market in a way that renders this method null and void. So don't be a little D-bag. You're just hurting all of us. Third thing. Okay, maybe it's fourth. Honestly, I've already lost track. Third thing, or maybe fourth, to take note of is before you try to attack the market in this fashion, you need to know a few truths about the market you're going to be attacking. You never want to run into battle and not know who your enemy is, which is probably from the art of war, maybe not. Some of you, this is going to be old news, but for the novice market investors still watching this, it's going to be important. Number one, I don't, I, these numbers are all arbitrary. So number one, there are three separate buying markets. Not everyone is in the same buying market. If you have a league mate that sells a player at 500,000 coins and its suggested price in your buying market is only 50,000 coins, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. A week from now, it may be the other way around. Each of the three buying markets are different at any moment, but the same across a length of time. The numbers all average out. So there's no advantage to being in any one over any other of the buying markets. Number two, the market you buy from and the market you sell into are two different entities that are both connected in some ways and disconnected in others. The buying market is what you see when you click the market button in the game. It's a massive collection of players that the bot is listed so that everyone with your buying, within your buying market has a pool of players to purchase from. The values of players in this buying market are influenced by market activity, price regulation, the events, and the rarity of cards. There are three global buying markets, which we've already established. You can bid and buy players in this market and you are competing against the bot as well as other players that are also in your buying market. When you list a player for sale though, it gets listed into a selling market which is a completely separate entity. If you list a player, it does not show up in the buying market. Selling a player is a direct transaction between you and the bot or your bot. And it has nothing to do with any other player or their interactions with the bot. Now I say your bot and not the bot because there are a few of us that have, we live in the market and have experimented with how it actually works and have concluded that even if you are in the same selling market with another player, your interaction with the bot that buys your cards, no matter what you do to manipulate that bot into buying your cards, that interaction with the bot that buys still differs from one player to the next, regardless of whether or not you're in the same buying market. Now, because of that, we believe that your personal interaction with the bot that buys your cards is a solo interaction. But that's just a theory. Did I lose you? Hopefully. I'm trying to thin the herd, remember? Now, if you're still here at this point, congratulations for sticking with it. Just let's go. Number three. I don't know. The value of players in the buying market is a reflection of what is happening as far as what everyone in your buying market is buying and bidding on, but the values of the cards being listed are regulated by the bot. Now you can look at the lowest buy it now for a player and assume if you list a player below that value, it should sell, but it's in no way guaranteed because the buying market and the selling market are separate. It's not a real market. It's a bot market. It's all fake. Also, because we've also established that your interaction with your own bot is different from anyone else's interaction. Even if you're in the same buying market, you may be able to sell to the bot at a different rate for different coins at a different time. Even though you're in the same buying market, selling market and buying market are separate entities. Values related across the two, but they are not connected. Think of them like second cousins. You need to remember that they're second cousins so you don't go hooking up at a family reunion, but at the same time, you could give a shit less if he graduates or she gets married or any of them have a kid. Okay, number four or five, eight, I don't know. It's the last thing. Any card you sell is a transaction between you and the bot. The bot buys based on programming. That programming keeps the market moving forward regardless of player activity. 
For any given player, the programming tells the bot to buy X amount of cards every Y amount of time. Now there are times in there that the value of those cards sinks because there's more than X amount that have been listed. And there are also times when the value of those cards goes up because there are less than X amount of cards listed across a time greater than Y. Didn't know this was a math class, did you? Okay, phishing is a method of guerrilla market farming where you list cards into the bot at a price higher than you expect them to sell at any given time, but high enough that if those X and Y numbers that the programming runs off indicate a spike on that player's value, you're going to be notified through a sale. Then you list your duplicates of that card on the new suggested price, which should be much higher than the normal because the bot just let you know it was buying at an inflated price. That's the basics of coin fishing. Hopefully, quite a few of you have stopped watching this video at this point or fast forwarded through me talking to get to the visuals. There aren't any visuals. And you're just hoping to that you can figure out the filters and just start making coins. I'm attempting to thin the herd and weed out the wannabe market investors. So if you're still listening, congratulations for sticking with it this far. This method requires time, patience, and a decent interconnect, internet connection because there's a lot of listing and dismissing on a daily cycle. If you can't list quickly or dismiss quickly, this method may be more work than it's worth. If you get a spinning wheel and two to three seconds lag between each listing or dismissal, I'm sorry. This method, it's going to work, but the time it's going to take you to do so is going to be significant. You should now understand the concept, but you need to know how it actually works. We're going to talk about the 69 rated silver market, which is my favorite area to work because it takes a minimal investment amount, but generates the largest set of profit across the entire spectrum of players. People ask all the time if this works with golds, elites, or masters. They think that if it's a higher value card, they can make more money, which is wrong. Uh, but the answer is yes, it does work in those ranges, but you don't get the same level of profit. And by level of profit, I mean a factor of your investment. Can you make back one and a half times what you invest in golds and elites? Absolutely. You can easily buy players for 100,000 coins each and fish the marking for spikes uh, where that same card is selling for 150,000 coins. That's a quick 50,000 coin profit. For me though, I prefer to buy players for under 1,000 coins and sell them for 20,000 to 50,000 coins regularly. And the more players you have, the easier it is to find spikes. If you have to buy 800 elites at 100,000 a piece to be able to sell them back for 150,000, your investment is not going to be worth the return. It's the same profit margin, but the markup is 100 times higher at 69 rated silvers. It requires more cards, but the profit is higher over the course of time. So, 69 rated silvers. Now, what I did at the beginning of the season was I invested around a million coins into 69 rated silvers with a search filter of no more than 800 coins by it now. I didn't worry about the league, the position, the nationality, the team, nothing. I just bought every single player I could in that range until I had about 800 to 1,000 players to work with. Actually, over the course of the season, I bumped that up to about 1,500 69 rated silvers on average in my reserves at any given time. Now, some of you that know and understand the game are asking yourself, how in the hell do you have 1,500 players when the game starts giving you warnings at 1,150 reserves and then straight up locks your ass out when you hit 1,200? To do this, I use a concept I like to call the parking lot. In fact, one of my league mates just took this to the absolute max and shared a pic of his parking lot full beyond 3,000 silvers. Rudger, you're a madman, and I bow down to you for your sheer maniacal insanity. I cannot imagine scrolling through 3,000 players just to see which fish the bot just bit on. Now, you can hold as many players as you want, as long as they are either listed in the market or sitting in your inbox as dismissed cards. In other words, you can list 1,000 players into the market on a 24-hour cycle, then buy 800 more cards. When the 1,000 in the market time out, they're going to sit in your inbox until you claim them. That's 1,800 cards in your possession, which is 600 over the max. Those 1,000 sitting in your inbox is what I call the parking lot. 
Now, I spent about a million coins buying 69 rated silvers under 800 coins each. To make this method effective, I suggest you get at least 800 cards in a single OVR. A full variety of players with lots of duplicates, but I try to keep any one under a maximum of 15 duplicates. Now, this method is all about variety. A large, massive variety is better. We're going to send out as many different lines into the pond as we can. Anyone who's married knows that variety is the spice of life, which is a really nice way of saying don't ever get married. Stick with variety, but I'm getting off track. Now that you have a huge store of cards in that range, you need to start fishing. To figure out the numbers for what you're going to put out on your lines for your bait, I start with doubling my investment at a minimum. So if I bought the cards at 800 coins each, I'm only going to be happy with getting at least 1,600 coins back out of any of them. That's my starting price, 1,600 coins. Buy it now is where it gets tricky. You want a number that's high enough that if the bot buys it at that rate, you'll know there's something going on with that player, but not too low that it gets triggered all the time and you miss out on any of the big coins. So go too high and you'll never get a bite. Go too low and the bot bites all the time, and that's the last thing you want. So let's say you, you're fishing elites. You paid 80,000 coins for them. I would set my starting price at 160,000 coins, and my bin, my buy it now, at probably 239,999 on a 24-hour cycle. I'd be happy with 160,000, but I'd be ecstatic if I triggered the bot at 240,000 and I could set my duplicates for that much or more. If I listed at 160,000 and a bin of 499,999, I may not get notified when the bot buys at 385,000. I'd miss out on a ton of profit. If I list at 160,000 starting price and 200,000 bin, I may easily double my coins more often, but I miss out on any of the spikes that let me bring in huge coins. Getting a million coins or more for an 80 rated base elite that you paid 75,000 coins for happens more often than you realize. That two times starting and three times bin is a good rule of thumb for elites, but if you find your bot is buying on a cycle and you're getting a lot of bites, then push the numbers a bit. There's times when I may be fishing with three times starting and 10 times bin for elites. So 240K starting price with a buy it now around 800,000 or a 24 hour cycle. This is another reason using this method generates the numbers and not the numbers generating the method. The market is fluid, it's a wave. You're looking to ride the wave. Now for the 69 rated cards, I prefer to double my investment at a minimum and look for spikes around 8,000 to 15,000 coins depending on what the market is doing and what my last few days have looked like. I don't worry about suggested prices for the initial listings. What I do is just put my lines in the water at that range and then see what happens. For the sake of this video, we'll list at 1,600 starting price and a buy it now of 10,999 coins. Again, those numbers are not set in stone. I can shift that a few thousand in either direction depending upon the market. I'll start doing going through my lot of players. I'm going to list on a 24-hour cycle, and I'm only going to list one of each player and leave all his duplicates. And now if I have a huge pile of players, like in the 1,500 to 2,000 reserves range, I may list two to three of each one, especially if I have six to ten of that card. I'll even list up to five of any player if I have like 15 to 20 duplicates just to make room in my reserves. Do this all on a 24 hour cycle. You never check your suggested prices if you're fishing. Not when you're putting your lines in the water. Then once you have them all listed, if you have too many players, this is when you can create the parking lot. This basically completely clears out my reserves in that range and allows me to claim other dismissed players uh, so I can list more in another market range or buy more investments like right now when we're picking up elites at such a crazy low price. You need the room in your reserve to do that. Now, to create the parking lot, I'm going to list the rest of my silvers. These are all of my duplicates on a four hour cycle just to move them out of my inbox. I'll set your starting price high enough that if they sold, it'd be fine, but it's likely that they're not going to sell. 
then the buy it now at about five times that. Let's just say around 10,000 starting for 69 rated silvers and let's say 40 or 50,000 buy it now. Uh, these are on a four hour cycle in alphabetical order because I'm just clearing out my reserves. Then you're gonna wait four hours until your parking lot appears, meaning all of those auctions finally time out. Then over the course of the next 20 hours, what you're looking for are spikes. If at any time one of your cards sells at their bin price, you'll go to your parking lot, dismiss all of its duplicates, and then see what the suggested price is. If it's under 3,000, you miss the spike. Um, you can sell it or skip it, it's up to you. Now if it's not showing a suggested price at all, that just means that the spike came and went and you missed it. If it is showing an inflated price though, above what your original bin was, so if we were doing 1600 and 10999 if you get a card to sell for 10999 you dismiss its duplicates and you go to put one in and its suggested price comes up at let's say 15000 uh, it means you, you hit the market on the rise. If you have one or two, just list them on a four hour at that suggested price. Now if you have a bunch, what I do is list one or two, then go play a versus match come back, list two more, play a versus match. Just repeat that process until they're all listed or sold. You don't wanna list more than a couple at a time or you're gonna miss the bot's window and the fluctuation of where he's buying. If you list 10 at once, let's say, he's probably only gonna buy one or two and the rest are gonna time out because his buying price is gonna drop down into normal range because you flooded the market with new cards. Or, if let's say it was on an upswing, you're gonna sell all of them at that current right because the bot buying price was continuing to rise and you jumped the gun and missed out on the profit. But if you list two at a time, wait a few minutes and then list two more, this allows you to ride the wave up or down. Now after four hours, if any of those timed out and they dismissed, just accept them and recheck their suggested price. Sometimes a wave can last six to 12 hours before it completely settles to no profit. So let's say you've got a, a card that spikes, the bait gets bought at 11,000 and you go to throw in the three that you have and the first one showing 75,000. And you list it, two minutes later you list another at 84,000. And then two minutes you list another at 55,000 because you saw how the wave went up and down. At the end of four hours, if one of those didn't sell, probably the 80,000, if you put that back in and check its suggested price, it could be 20, 30,000 because the wave is coming down that slow. So you always check. Now, if you spend a million coins on a thousand players worth a million coins and you can find two to three players every night that are spiking for 10 to 50 times what you paid for them, you sell all your duplicates and then buy more to replace them at 800 coins a piece. You can recover your million coins in a few nights easily. Sometimes you can double or triple that million coin investment in one 24 hour period. Just depends on the market. Some nights may not generate any sales. Uh, then the next night you get 50,000 coins, but other nights can bring in three to five million. This method requires patience, a massive variety of players, and the willingness to put in the work. Yes, it works in all ranges of cards, even bronze, but the numbers vary for each tier. Take what we've talked about and develop your own range to go fishing. If you have questions or you want more specific numbers at any time, make sure you uh, check out finallysleeps.com or better yet, follow and subscribe at Twitch so you can take part in the live streams where we tackle the market, talk investments and coin fishing in every single episode. That's it. This was hopefully the most long-winded, boring as hell, so difficult to watch, pull your hair out, Jesus, why is he talking slow, slow video I'll ever put out. If you made it through the whole video, congratulations. You have what it takes to try this method. If you dumped out because it was too much talking and not enough video, then this method wasn't for you in the first place. No patience, which is a good thing. Too many people fishing means the lake's going to dry up and I don't want a bunch of you casting out and crossing my lines. Which means that's enough fishing references to last a lifetime. And for that, I'm sorry.
as long as you keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Better videos than this. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully this one was terrible. Horrible video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow and consider subscribing at Twitch. That way you get notified whenever we go live to stream FIFA Mobile. Don't miss an episode of the podcast My Wife Hates Video Games for an entertaining look at the world of geek, including movies, books, comics, horror, sci-fi, basically everything my wife hates. The links are all below, as well as social media, merch, and my last live comedy album, Life Before the Internet. Still here? Uh, go ahead and enjoy one of these other videos or subscribe it YouTube up here that's it I, I've got nothing else